I know I told you that I would be bringing you two videos of these your favorite YouTuber video thing. Turns out I had way more people respond to my messages than I ever dreamed I would. So this is going to be video number two of three. So just like the first video, check out the description of this video. It'll have links to find all the creators, uh, links to their channels, their social media platforms, everything like that. Do me a favor and go show them some love because honestly without them, this video would be me just rambling about my equipment and nobody wants to hear that. So without further ado, I'm going to let the creators take it from here. Hi, my name is Phil Rowley, and like Brian, I have my own YouTube channel. And Brian reached out to me, very flattering, because I'm a big fan of Brian's work, both uh, on his channel and the Flyman channel. My forte is Stillwater Fly Fishing and Stillwater Flies specifically. That's what the majority of my site is, although we do uh, vlogs and other uh, Stillwater content as well. But the channel was founded uh, tying Stillwater Flies. And that's what we still do today along with those other things. Most of the filming we do as far as camera wise is on a Sony Handycam. Um, these are, are great because uh, they shoot up to 4K now, although I, th I still think this one is still 1080, which is still good enough for YouTube. Um, but the ability of us to zoom in and zoom out at specific times on the fly is really beneficial because you might have a step, you want to zoom right in on the head of the fly, and conversely, the next time you want to zoom back out and show how you form a dubbing loop or something. So this camera is very versatile for that. Um, we also do dabble a little bit now, more and more, with DSLRs. And when we do um, that, we would use a, a macro lens. This is a 90 millimeter macro, we'd use that. Um, the SLR I'm filming with right now, it's a Sony a7 II, works uh, very well. Um, we also use, um, when using the SLR, a little external mic, uh, works well. Like this is a Rode Video Micro. And also started experimenting um, with the uh, uh, Ceramonic um, Blinks. I got them right here off camera. This is the uh, Blink 500, I think. Great little microphones come in a set of two. Um, you can use them with a lavalier uh, microphone like this and pin it to your shirt, or you can use them, just clip this to your shirt because you're off camera most of the time so nobody sees this thing sort of clomped onto your shirt or whatever, and it's a microphone as well. So these are great little units. For lighting, we try to use the natural light that comes in through the windows uh, in the basement studio, but we also augment it. So I've got these cowboy studio lamps and then the umbrella that goes with them to diffuse it. The only other part of our setup that uh, we do as well is my friend Bob who I work with on these. Um, he um, sets up the camera and everything and connects it via HDMI cable so uh, I get to see what I'm tying on the big 85 inch uh, television he has down in his basement. But that is basic my basic setup. The Handycam, trying to use natural light, uh, using the microphone on the Handycam, experimenting a bit more with external mics, whether that's a lavalier mic like that Ceramonic or the Rode mic, and uh, lighting, I said, was the ambient light and augmented with the umbrella lights I got uh, from Amazon, and of course the LED light to shoot on the fly, and that's basically it. It doesn't have to be complicated. Hopefully this helps you out, gives you some, uh, along with the other videos Brian's probably showing in this series, um, some insights on how you can set up your home uh, studio to, so you can make YouTube channels and join this great um, collaborative effort that is YouTube. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy doing it. What's up everybody, Sven here. Um, thanks to Brian for letting me share with uh, you how I do my camera setup when videoing. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pop up what I use. Um, I tie a little bit difficult. Uh, basically, I put the SLR between me and my vise. I'm able to do that with these uh, extension tubes. So I'm able to use a 50 millimeter lens and basically get the correct distance. So I'm not getting super, super huge shoulders from arm and arm fatigue, but uh, um, I use a 12 millimeter extension tube with a 50 millimeter lens that I'm using. The other thing that I use is to bring up the light. I have a light above my desk shining down on the fly, but um, I just bought this cheap uh, six inch ring light, LED ring light. It's got a, some adjustments on it so I can adjust the light. And that way we're able to uh, limit the shadows between me and the fly from this angle. So I have light coming down 
down, light going straight to it. And then because I have kids um, all over the place most of the day, I usually record these uh, while they're still awake and then at night. Um, this was a huge upgrade for me was this uh, Rode mic. So I'll record over the audio so we can get a nice real crisp audio to uh, my videos. And uh, that's pretty much what I do. So appreciate you letting me share. How's it going? My name is Drew Wilson. You might know me from Instagram as Drooler or the guy who does the fish tattoos. What you may not know is that I also have a YouTube channel and I semi-regular make, you know, fly fishing videos. So I was going to show you guys what I use gear-wise. So currently I'm shooting with a Canon 80D. I have a handful of lenses for it, but we'll get around to that in a second. More than anything, I use a GoPro Max. I love this camera. You can do anything you want with this. If you were starting to make YouTube videos, this is what I would say is all you need in the beginning. There's a camera on each side, so you have like a selfie camera. If you want to talk to the camera, you have a screen you can see, or one for taking videos from a distance. Um, I almost, you know, religiously keep it on this clamp. If I want to put it on a tree or hook it to the side of the truck or anything like that, it's always handy, always there for me. I also have a GoPro 8 Black that I keep on a chest strap and I wear this when I'm fishing sometimes. This is how you get a lot of like the hands-free fishing footage. Now let's see, I will use this to show you that. All right, so I've swapped over to using my GoPro Max. Now I love this camera more than probably any of these others that I have and I use it more than anything. It's just so easy and generally the sound works really well if you're close enough at least and it's not too windy. So. This is my Canon 80D on a Joby Gorillapod. These will go out on you if you use them a lot, so be prepared to re-up after maybe a year. I uh, keep a Rode microphone on top, and the lens that's on here currently is a Canon 10-20 wide-angle lens. Now I have a Mavic Pro drone, Mavic 2 I believe, but I have no clue where it is. Kind of true fashion where I'll like set something down and it'll end up getting put away or something like that. Uh, so it's probably somewhere in the camper here or in the truck, but who knows? Hopefully, hopefully I'll find it. I just saw it the other day. Uh, that's pretty much what I use for filming videos. Um, yeah, quick about me. I live in this travel trailer with my lady. This is our camper here, the Happy Trout. And that's our truck over there. And we just kind of drive around the country and I do a lot of fishing tattoos and I sell fishing stickers uh, so that we can make ends meet. And we just fish a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. I hope it's helpful. Take care. Bye. What's up, everyone? This is Ken Tanaka, Wish for Fish, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the gear that I use to make my videos. Now, the first thing that I recommend is to get the gear that best suits you. Just because one of your favorite creators is using a certain type of gear or somebody recommends something doesn't necessarily mean that's the best thing for you. A perfect example of this is the camera that I'm using right now, the Sony a7S II, was going to be my primary camera, and I still do use it a lot, but... Through experience and being on the field, I later on found out that a DSLR is kind of a pain in the butt to use, uh, especially in the jungle or in the field. Uh, it's just a pain in the butt to deal with lenses and changing out lenses and all that kind of stuff. So I actually went to a camcorder setup, which is much better for my situation. Now in my studio, along with my A7S II, I am using a lighting setup as well as a Rode boom mic. I do have a front, a key, and a fill light along with my practical lighting. I do have a window which I keep closed so then I could control the lighting. That way I don't have to match color temps if I'm shooting during the day and at night. So as I mentioned, I am now on the field pretty much using this Sony AX700. This thing is awesome. I really like it because it has a selfie screen. That way you could see yourself, which is obviously important when you're shooting by yourself. Uh, it does have internal ND filters, so I don't have to change stuff out. I do have a polarized filter on there already, so then that way I don't even have to put anything on there at all. And the only thing that I had added on here was this mic. It just It's just a better for your audio. Now, being that I'm on the water, it's very important that I have stuff that is waterproof. So right now, my action camera is the GoPro 9. I really like the GoPro 9. I was using the Sony up until the GoPro 8 where they got rid of the housing. Uh, so then I switched to the GoPro 8 and I switched to the 9 because of the front facing screen. Whenever I'm shooting myself or on the go, now I'm shooting with this 
right here, the Sony RXO Mach 2. This thing is insane. It's got a selfie screen, which is obviously very important when you're shooting yourself, but it is waterproof, dustproof, drop proof, and it is discreet, which I love because the last thing I want to be is caught on influencers on the wild. The main thing is don't get discouraged if you don't have all this equipment. It's not about the gear. I started this channel with this Flip Mino right here and then graduated to this Samsung. So it's not necessarily about the equipment and more about your creativity. So get it there and get creative with the equipment that you have access to right now. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me at any time. Hey Fly Anglers, this is Doug from Backyard Angling. When it comes to filming our YouTube videos, my brother Dan and I keep our setup pretty simple. All of our gear can fit into a small bag right here. So let's start off by talking a little bit about the cameras. Dan and I each use a Sony A6000 and we pair this with just the two kit lenses, so nothing special. The 55 to 210, and this is what I usually film with, and my brother Dan tends to use the 16 to 55 millimeter lens. We also use a couple of GoPros in our setup. Dan and I each have one uh, it's not something that we film on a lot, but it's a good option for some of those action shots or underwater shots that you can't normally get with a regular camera. And probably the most underutilized uh, camera that I kind of see on YouTube and that we use a ton of is just your regular smartphone. These things are unbelievably handy and everybody has one. So when it comes to audio, usually we just use the built-in microphones on the camera, but occasionally we'll break out the Zoom H1 external lav mic, which I'm wearing right now, and we use that for videos like this, product reviews, and some on the water footage. When it comes to getting those macro shots of mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies, and even filming our fly tying videos. So when it comes to our fly tying setup, we just use the 55 to 210 millimeter lens, I use a six time magnifier. I use the camera on manual focus, shooting at 24 frames per second. And that kind of gives us what I consider to be pretty good shots. So that's a brief look into our camera setup. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us at backyardangling.com.